Hi, welcome to the part 18. So we are looking at some of the real questions. Let us dig into the questions. By the way, if you have not yet subscribed, do so. You may pause this piece and read it carefully. So you have an Azure Stream Analytics service being used and there is a watermark delay. Now these delays can happen one if uh, there is not enough processing or compute available and second is that your throughputs are not enough so a throttling happens so watermark delays is like you have two guys this guy and this guy and this guy is one and this guy is two so one sends some data to two but there is a delay something got stuck here either two is not able to process it or, or there is some problem in between so we just saw in the documentation that this is happening because they do not have enough resource to process the incoming data so you may pause this and read this carefully this next question now in order to answer this in the certification see there is a sequence that you should be aware of but what is the story you have a data lake storage and then you have synapse database and you are using polybase to read the files kept in the data lake storage so this kind of helps in data virtualization that means your files are still in the data lake storage and you do not need to load that data in database you can access these as external tables the files would act as external tables but you got to use something like polybase now the question here is you have to configure polybase and you got to choose three important components here and in the correct order so thumb rule time always remember that first you have to set up the scope database scoped credential why because polybase will use that for authentication and then you create an external data source so basically you will give the source type location and other details so that is the way polybase it will talk to data lake files and then you set up the external file format this one and again you will tell it what is the file format is it a parquet file is it a csv file and then other stuff pause this and read it carefully so this will be our answer now you do not need an asymmetric key here why we don't need because the question is not talking about encryption and decryption okay the other thing is we do not need a database encryption key again because nobody is talking about encryption so this question is very easy we have eliminated uh, two wrong answers and the only thing that you have to do is arrange this in an order this is already uh, put up in in the correct order you have database scoped credentials you got external data source and then external file format let us look at this next question so you have uh, two systems and then you have data factory which is pulling the data from this place these are the two source systems system one and system two and it is going to populate of these fact tables and uh, dimension tables it is going to populate these so obviously dimensions should populate after both s1 and s2 have executed those areas 
and the fact table should be populated after the dimensions have been populated so that is a sequence and everything mind you everything should execute every eight hours so what should we do to schedule these pipelines so in this case we are talking about schedule trigger because why uh, because this is a key decision making factor that means anything that has event triggers is wrong what are event triggers something like a file came in and it landed and then your adf would run that is an event adf would run if an event is true if the file comes in successfully in this case we are not talking about events we are talking about schedules we should not add a schedule trigger to all the four pipelines it is we create a parent pipeline okay this is not patient this is parent pipeline we create one master pipeline that would contain four pipelines and we use a schedule trigger okay that is the right way of doing it so when you are creating a schedule trigger you have to give the start date you have to give end date you have to give recurrence recurrence means after every x hours in our question it is every 8 hours so the recurrence would be 8 and we just need one trigger you see this one trigger can kick off multiple pipelines I hope this is clear. Now, such questions you will get in one section. You will get three or four questions there. And mind you, you will not be allowed to return to these four questions again. This is a separate section. Okay. Um, here, see what is happening is so you have a data scientist and they are making use of uh, Scala and R. You have data engineers who are making use of Python and SQL. And you have automated jobs which is making use of these three stuff. The problem with Scala is that it does not work with high concurrency clusters. So you should remember this thumb rule to answer these questions. That means automated jobs you have to use standard cluster okay the same is true for data scientist so that means data scientist should use standard cluster which is fine and jobs should use standard concurrency cluster but here they mention high concurrency see if you use high concurrency for jobs and your jobs are making use of scala then this will not work so our answer would be no see this one is a data factory question and what it is doing is the loads it will keep happening yeah, every hour so the load methodology we have to use is uh, incremental load here this, in this case why because you you are getting 20000 or sorry uh, 200k new files daily and what it says is they are only loading new data new data means incremental incremental means whatever old data is there you will not reload it obviously common sense because old data is already there loaded okay and then which trigger you have to use see you have to do it once every hour so we would go for tumbling window this is a great diagram tumbling window one key thing is see we are telling every one hour so this is totally isolated from this one okay 
so there is no overlap and that is the best thing it is purely non overlapping time interval see fixed schedule trigger is just to run something on a particular time on a particular schedule so since we are saying once hourly we don't see we will use fixed schedule if we know okay at 2 pm you run this and at 5 pm you run this okay or we know for sure that uh, the occurrence has to be consistent since you have to minimize the load times and costs so we will go with tumbling window so these are some notes on incremental loads you may feel free to pause and read this Okay, so these are our two answers. So if you haven't yet subscribed, do so, and there is a link in the description section. You may click that and become a member to gain access to paid content. Cloud Kernel or Cloud Ninja membership would help you. So this brings us to the end of part 18. I hope you are able to understand the concepts. See you in the next part.